Guys, thanks for tuning in. And all I want to say is, I quit. And you may also be feeling like quitting in the next week or so. Because January 17th is Quitter's Day. And although I am technically not quitting anything right now, I'm expecting that feeling of wanting to quit something to increase over the next couple of days. Now, Quitter's Day generally is January 17th, and that's because after a couple of weeks, people realize that the resolutions they made are a little more difficult to stick with than they initially thought. In fact, Strava did some interesting research, and they discovered that the second Friday in January was the most fateful day when motivations begin to shake. So this year, 2023, the second Friday in January is Friday the 13th, which if you're watching this video on the day it was released is about four days from now, or five days. Depends if you count the day we're in. Anyway, forget. It's in a couple of days. So I hate to be a buzzkill, but I actually didn't make any New Year's resolutions this year. And actually, I say this year, but I really don't make New Year's resolutions. I'm not a fan of putting something off for a future date. If I want to start something that I think is going to be good for me or a good habit, I generally want to start it right away or as soon as I think about it. And that also insulates me from having to quit anything two weeks into the new year. But still, there's always the possibility that I might quit something good that I'm already doing. Maybe running, maybe eating healthy, maybe you so you may think it's funny that Strava was able to pinpoint this date, the second Friday in January, as being the day that people quit. But Strava has a lot of data and they actually looked at 31.5 million activities around the world. And that's how they came up with the second Friday in January being the most quittingest day. So according to surveys, the New Year's resolution of exercising more is the most made resolution. And it accounts for 38% of all resolutions, followed by 33% wanting to lose weight and then 32% want to eat more healthy. Now the observant view you're gonna see that that makes up 103%. But don't ask me what that means. That just came from an article I was looking at when I was looking at numbers of resolutions. Anyway, the point is, is that exercise is the most made resolution. Oh, and this is the weekly running and training vlog where the main purpose is for you to tell me about your week of running. So I wanna hear about your successes and I definitely wanna hear about your setbacks. I mean, I really wanna hear about those setbacks because this video is about quitting. So let me know what your resolution is and if you think you're gonna make it past that two week mark into the year. I guess you could also drop a comment about past resolutions. And look, don't waste my time with resolutions that you've been able to stick with. That's not fun. I want to hear about the resolutions that you have actually given up on during the year. Oh, and did you know that New Year's resolutions have been being made by people for at least the last 4,000 years? That's a long time where people have wanted to make a change with the New Year, even though back then the New Year was a little different. It was actually held in mid-March on the first moon after the spring equinox. So how about a couple more statistics? People love statistics, and by people, I mean me. Did you know that one in three people failed to keep their New Year's resolution through the month of January. That is 33% of people that can't stick to it. I know that's not you, but everybody else that isn't watching this video right now, those are the people. And get this, one third of people can't make it past January and only 10% of people make it the entire year adhering to their New Year's resolution. Pretty sad. Of course, we don't have any numbers in between the first month and the end of the year. So some people, I suppose, could make it all the way to the holiday season again and they spent the whole year eating more healthy and then they fall off the wagon at the end of the year only to make another New Year's resolution, which they will stick to for another 11 and a half months because that's not bad so here's the thing and my friends if you are watching this clearly you are a runner and this is going to be pretty profound but there's nothing actually about the new year's day january 1st that makes it any easier to do something that you want to do right we need willpower we need discipline to carry it through the year notice i didn't say we need motivation we might have motivation in that first couple of weeks, but I think the third of people that fall off the wagon, those are the people whose motivation runs out and they don't switch over to discipline. But again, that's not you. So here's the thing. A lot of people, they ditch their New Year's resolutions because after a couple of weeks, they realize that they don't really care about them. Life is better if they don't follow the resolution. So I want you to make your resolution based on something that you really care about. And really these resolutions, they're just goals. Remember the acronym SMART goals? We're not gonna go into it. Google it if you don't know what it is. But your goals do have to be smart. Of course, if you you do give up on your new year's resolution it's really not that bad there is a silver lining to that cloud one you don't have to worry about it anymore. You don't have to count calories or go to the gym. Pretty much do whatever you want to. You can actually pat yourself on the back for making it as far as you did. If you made it two weeks into the year, that's better than not making an effort at all, right? And you get to post about it. You can spin this into some pretty interesting content saying that, you know, you gave it your best shot and that you'll probably give it another go next year. All right, we are moving quickly through this. This is gonna be a pretty short video today and we are almost gonna get into my week of running, which actually included a race. But let's just talk about the reasons that people do quit their resolutions. Again, this isn't you, but you may know someone that wants to quit. Number one, they're not committed enough. And not being committed enough is not a bad thing, but you need the commitment if you want to stick to it. Number two, the people that break their resolutions don't have enough time to fulfill their resolutions. In the beginning, it's all pie in the sky. You think, yeah, I'm going to be able to prioritize this time 
and it becomes more difficult than you realize. Number three, you experience a setback. Now the worst setback that I could think of this time would be an injury, a runny injury. That would really throw a spanner in the works of your new year's resolution to run more. But also you have to go to a birthday party and there's gonna be cake and ice cream and shots and you have to eat all that and drink that because it would be rude not to. Number four, people give up on resolutions because the progress doesn't happen as quickly as they think it should. And this is actually something that I find myself falling into, not actually quitting, thinking that I want progress to happen on my time, not on real time. But it's true, it can really put a downer on things and make you question if it's actually worth continuing. But guys, it is. Running and most other things take a lot of work and the payoff is worth it in the long run, but it does take time. And finally, the fifth reason that people give up on their resolutions is that they don't have enough support. Guys, we're all just human and we need a support system to help motivate us, to help keep us going. And maybe you have someone at home that can motivate you. Maybe you go to Strava to see all your athletic friends doing what they do. And hopefully that will kick you in the butt and get you out the door and help keep that discipline fired up. And guys, I want you to know that I support you. I know how difficult it is to stick to your resolutions, to run when you're not feeling like it, and to chase after those goals, even though the progress isn't coming as quickly as we'd like. And I just want to say that I am here for you as much as a random stranger on the internet can be. So if you ever want a little pep talk, just drop a comment, DM me on Instagram, and let me know what part of your running that you're struggling with. And I will tell you that you can do it. And with that, I had a pretty good week of running. Started off on Monday with 10.6 miles, very easy. Now, Monday was the day that I decided that I was gonna race on Saturday. So I only had a couple of days leading up to this race. So I already knew that I wasn't going to be fully tapered coming into this race because obviously it's not a goal race. So on Tuesday, I decided to do my normal interval day that I had planned before I decided to run that half marathon where I warmed up for two miles. Then I did eight 800 meter repeats with 400 miles recovery in between. And then I cooled down for 2.1 miles. So I know probably not ideal to do that a couple of days before a half marathon but it is what it is i wanted to do that workout and then on wednesday i had a super easy day i only knocked out four miles and then thursday i took completely off from running friday was another very easy day i kept the mileage right down i only ran four miles but i did include six 30 second pickups with 30 seconds recovery in between and that's just to get my legs turning over getting ready for race day because saturday saturday was race day and i ran 1.3 miles as a little warm-up and this time it was really to actually warm myself up not just warm up my running muscles it was a cold day and then i knocked out the half marathon Marathon, and it was a pretty successful race and you will see the entire race video in a couple days from now on Friday. And then on Sunday I was feeling pretty stiff but I decided to go out and run with a group and that day I ran 11.1 miles just super cruisy although the last couple of miles were getting pretty tough. Even though I was running easy and my heart rate was low I was noticing my legs were feeling very heavy. Anyway all in all pretty good week especially with the race. My volume for the week was 54.3 miles which is about 87.4 kilometers so considering that I did take a couple couple of lower days in addition to my regular day off I feel pretty good about that total if you have made it to this point in the video why don't you put that little half a coconut emoji in the comments just so I know that you have made it all the way to the end I really appreciate your time and of course I want to know about you quitting do you think about quitting something that you've started let me know be kind be happy run well see you in a couple of days